Good evening, class. Today we will be starting the chapter. This chapter three, chapter organization with plants and animals. To the new students here, my name is Kevin, and uh, I did my PhD in plants and animals. So I will be taking up physics and biology. So you are students of the elders. Okay. So yeah, the yeah, so chapter one and two sometimes go back. Now we do chapter three, chapter one and two uh, in plants and animals. Structural organization in plants and animals. Structural organization is plants and animals. Okay, so the first uh, uh, side thing is tissues. Any idea of this? Yeah, the yeah. group of cells that have a similar structure and they act together to form like you know all this amount. We generally now we are starting with plants and animals. So I think in today's class we just uh, go through the uh, last portion of plants. Okay, so take down the de definition of the word issue. Tissues are tissues are a group of tissues are a group of cells. Tissues are a group of cells that have a similar structure. Tissues are a group of cells that have a similar structure. And act together and act together to perform a specific function. And act together to perform a specific function. So what's your name? Constant 
state of dividing where it can uh, help in your efficiency. So, yeah, take this down. These are systematic issues are a group. Meristematic tissues are a group of cells. Meristematic tissues are a group of cells that are in. Meristematic tissues are a group of cells that are in a constant state of division. That are in constant state of division forming new cells forming new cells forming new cells which retain which retain their power of division so you know tell me you know and after it gets to a certain size, it gets into two cells, right? And so many four cells uh, depend on the type of cell. Anyway, this is generally the case. So, you know, there has to be a limit to how much cell can divide. In many systematic tissues, these cells, after the split, still have that you know, ability to again grow and build. That's because of which you know, can go faster and faster. The second type of tissue is permanent tissue where the division is much lower. So I'll give the example of that. So, yeah, in very systematic tissue, after they put the cells divide, they have the ability to multiply again. Okay. The second type is permanent tissue. Permanent tissue. So, like I said, in systematic tissues, you have cells which will divide, and these also have the ability to divide. So, after certain time of dividing again and again, they lose the ability to divide them. But then they form certain organs uh, and subscribe uh, plants and all that. And then they take up a specific function. Are you getting me? Like in human beings, all made up of cells. But then you know, when you look, they form the heart as a separate function. Form the liver have a function. Similarly, even plants have a lot of parts. So when they come together, they form this tissue which doesn't retain the ability to multiply. They form a specific function. That is permanent. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So yeah, take this down. Permanent tissues. The cells form the cells form by the meristematic tissue the cells form by the meristematic tissue the cells form by meristematic tissue take up Cells formed by the systematic take up a specific role, take up a specific role and lose and lose the ability to divide and lose the ability to divide. These are permanent. And then let's take down this sentence. This process, this process of taking up, this process of taking up a permanent shape, this process of taking up a 
permanent shape, size, and function. This process of taking up the permanent shape, size, and function is called differentiation. Is called differentiation. So when we say this is systematic system, differentiate and form from the So in permanent tissue, there are two types. You might have heard these two words. The two types are xylem and phloem. Remember, in your head science, xylem and phloem. So, yeah, what is that? From the root to your area, from the plant of the tissue. So, there are two. So there are some tissues which take up, uh, you know, absorb water to the plant And there are some tissues which take up uh, organic uh, material. So xylem is the tissue which generally carry water. And flow is the tissue which generally carry organic components or lichen. Okay, so take this down. These are two types of permanent tissues. First one is xylem, X Y N. Xylem. Take this down. Xylem is the complex tissue of plant. Xylem is the complex tissue of plant. And uh, responsible for xylem is the complex tissue of plant responsible for transporting responsible for transporting water and other nutrients to the plant. So responsible for transporting water and other nutrients to the plant. Here. The next one is flow in PHMO. Flow in is a tissue, a complex tissue. Phloem is the complex tissue of plants. Phloem is the complex tissue of plants responsible for responsible for transport food. Phloem is the complex tissue of plants responsible for transporting food and other organic material. Responsible for transporting food and other organic material. Okay. And the last type of tissue, this is xylem and phloem, where secondary, sorry, primary, uh, what is it? Dominant tissue, yeah. And the last one is secretory. Thank you.
cytomorphology or plant morphology the study of the physical form the study of the physical form and external structure the study of the physical form and external structure of plants and external structure of plants okay the next uh, side heading is plant organ plant organ okay a plant organ is the plant a plant organ is the structural and functional unit a plant organ is the structural and functional unit of a plant that's all pretty simple right okay so there are two types of uh, plant organs okay? one is vegetative
second type is reproductive organs. Take this down. Organs that organs that take part organs that take part in the reproduction process organs that take part in the reproduction process of a plant organs that take part in the reproduction process of a plant so yeah back bench any examples of organs that help in reproduction in plants not in humans sure vishal flower yes flower is the main reproductive organ okay and then even fruit and seeds take down the examples flowers fruits and seeds what was your name again yeah you okay so yeah example for reproductive organs are flowers fruits and seeds any idea why flowers is a reproductive organ any idea Basically, how do plants multiply? There are various ways. Some multiply using spores and all that. We are generally concentrating uh, now on reproductive plants. So, you know, just think of this is a rough diagram of a flower. And they have, you know, you know how flowers are. Right? They have this is on the side view and it's cut in half. So, you know, they have a lot of petals and then they have spores over here. So these are the male organs, and some plants have some organs over here that are female organs. So basically, when an insect comes at it, the male or uh, what is that? The spores get attached to the uh, leaves or whatever insect comes at it. And when the insect grows at it in another plant that has a female organ, the spores meet with that, and then it starts you know the reproduction process. So because of this. The flower slowly turns into a fruit. Yeah, orange. So because that's why they say honeybees are very important because they help in multiplication of plants. Sometimes even the air can, you know, uh, help in reproduction of the species at times. But generally, honeybees are and butterflies are very important. So yeah, after the spores leave the you know ovaries, they form. Take this down. Uh, it is a type of tissue. It is a type of tissue. It is a type of tissue at the tip of at the tip of a plant root. It is a type of tissue at the tip of a plant root. So, you know how 
Carrot, radish, and beet. Second type, fibrous root system. F I B R O U S. A fibrous root system is the opposite of a tap root system. A fibrous root system is the opposite of a tap root system. it is usually formed by it is usually formed by thin thin is usually formed by thin moderately branching roots moderately m o d e r a t e l y What is moderately? Moderate. Uh, you have like you know when they say anything in between, like you just say this is easy and hard. Anything in middle they say is moderate. So this is like you know half growing, not fully growing. Moderately, you can say it's like half growing. Anyway, so yeah, it is formed by thin. moderately branching roots it is formed by thin moderately branching roots growing from growing from the stem growing from the stem you know what is stem right stem yes or no so you have a plant right so you know the root ha huh? so the part above the root this thing the strong structure is the stem or 
ಕೊಡಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ಸರ್ ಬ್ರಾಂಚ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಓಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಐ ಆಲ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯು ಓಕೆ ಸೋ ಫೈ ಟ್ಯಾಪ್ ಫುಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೈಬ್ರಸ್ ರೂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡನ್ ಸೋ ಯಾ ಯು ಗೈಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಯಾ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈಬ್ರಸ್ ರೂಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ onion banana okay onion if you are wondering you actually see the onion you wait in this is kind of like an onion you see here the roots are over here like this that's why it's fibrous food okay so you guys can take a break uh, how long do you want the break what half an hour 5 minutes or 10 minutes online class you guys tell me how long do you want the break the 10 minutes please 10 minutes don't be greedy i'm giving you 5 minutes break okay i'll see you at 5 5 
Hello, I hope you guys are back. So we'll be continuing. I can't give you guys too much break, okay? Because you know, of course, Shwe will shout at me. Okay. So now we are going to be doing different types of, uh, I mean, the difference between tap root and fibrous root system. So I make two columns. Tap root and fibrous roots. Okay. The first difference is in under tap root, one large long root is present. One large long root is present. One large long root is present. And the fibrous root. The, the long root is absent. The long root is absent. Okay. Tap root will go deep. Tap root will go grow deeper into the soil. Tap root will grow deeper into the soil. Fibrous root won't grow much deep. Fibrous root won't grow much deep. So if there is a drought, you know it's a drought? Lack of, uh, if it doesn't rain for a long time, it becomes, the soil becomes dry and all that. That's a drought, opposite of flood. So in a drought, which uh, uh, plants will have more chance of surviving? Tap roots, because their roots are more in the soil. Okay. The third uh, difference is tap roots. Under tap roots, tap roots will develop. Tap roots will develop. into tap roots will develop into dicots tap roots will develop into dicots and fibrous roots will develop into and fibrous roots Developed into one of them. So, any idea of what is the dicot? Okay, dicot. And more on. So, dicot basically is the seed. Some seeds will be like food like this. But some seeds you can put in the food. So the ones you can into two are uh, type forms, like and the ones you cannot speak are monocots, like open. They are going to speak like this. For now, this we are taking this down to one. Yeah, that's the difference. Okay, the next fourth difference. Okay. Tap root, tap root doesn't hold, tap root doesn't hold soil particles, tap root doesn't hold soil particles together, tap root doesn't hold soil particles together and fibrous roots hold fibrous root hold many soil particles 
fibrous roots hold many soil particles together hold many soil particles together and fibrous roots hold many soil particles together at the surface of the soil at the surface of the soil full stop i'll repeat fibrous roots hold many soil particles together right together at the surface of the soil this prevents soil erosion this prevents soil erosion So you know, uh, you have soil. The wind blows that soil is washed off. The water flows that soil is washed off. Soil goes. So like over time, all the soil will disappear. So if you have fibrous roots, if since there are lots of this, it will hold water, more water in the soil, and the soil will be a little bit more. So the wind and water can't take the soil. underground tap roots are always underground and fibrous root might be fibrous roots might be fibrous roots might be underground or aerial fibrous roots might be Underground or aerial. Uh, 
have the problem with this panel where the roots form from the branches come up so it comes down. But the panel three is the best example. So yeah, take down the expression for crop roots, roots that roots that roots that arise from roots that arise from branches roots that arise from branches and enter the soil roots that arise from branches and enter the soil providing support to the trees providing support to the tree as if it roots that arise from branches and enter the soil providing support to the trees example banyan tree okay second type is still roots still s t i l t still it was the other example i gave like this is the soil some roots are somewhat like this and then from here the plant grows best example is corn if you actually see the root of the corn it's called maize okay generally like when we say in biology books they call it maize the same thing as corn their roots are kind of like this is this still root so take this down roots that roots that arise from roots that arise from the lower most portion roots that arise from the lower most portion of the stem roots that arise from the lower most portion of the stem and fix firmly to the soil and fix firmly to the soil example maize in other words corn The third type is climbing roots. Climbing roots. Okay, so this you can is not exactly tree roots. There are certain types of plants. Uh, maybe this uh, whatever the tobacco, the palm. Plant about that. So they grow around trees. They are like trees. You can notice the roots on the tree. The roots, you know, they are on the tree. Like they enter the tree. Sometimes even on some wall, you can notice metal walls. Sometimes even cement walls. You find some plants growing and the roots. Are. So this system is the climbing roots. We just basically climbing a certain anything. It can be a wall. So take this down. Climbing roots. Climbing roots are the roots. Climbing roots are the roots that arise from. that arise from the stem and arise from the stem in weak in plants having weak stems in plants having weak stem i'll repeat climbing roots are the roots that arise from the stem in plants having a weak stem 
these roots take down these roots help the plant help the plant in climbing these roots help the plant in climbing for example palm a plant what is the plant called in english Beetle. So they they call the plant piper beetle or tobacco plant or tobacco plant. So yeah, example the piper beetle. B e t l. The next type is the microphone. Okay. P N E U M A P N E U M A T O P H O R E metaphor. Okay. So these generally these roots will find in environments where. Uh, There's a lot of water, basically on the edge of a river. So, uh, still fruits are there. They are like still fruits. So you have a big river. There's a lot of water, and you find the roots coming out of the water. And from here, the plant is growing. Are you getting? Comes from above the water. Next example is mangrove forest. Mangrove tree. You know, it's mangrove tree. You can find them on the edge of the ocean. They are the mangrove. They are when you find tiger, they are there. So yeah, these are mangroves. Yeah. So yeah, take this down. These are. The microphone. These are roots that enable plants. These are roots that enable plants to breathe air. To breathe air. In habitat, H A B I T A T. In habitat that have waterlogged soil. In habitat that have waterlogged soil. W A T E R L O W G E D. Waterlogged. Waterlogged meaning it has a lot of water. Okay, these roots may grow. These roots may grow. These roots may grow down from the stem. Or up from a root. These roots may grow down from a stem. Or up from a root. Example: mangroves. M A N G R O V E S. Roots. Both look really dull. Really dull. Try it.
then the next one is parasitic. These are the roots of what kind of plants? An organism, it creates a plant or animal. An organism that is dependent on another organism. It is, in your body, there are hundreds of groups. You know that, right? These are parasites. They depend on you. They feed from you. Yeah. They form in the classic system. That's why you take those uh, tablets or just a worms. So, it's to kill these worms in your body. So, those are parasites. So, they don't know even in plants. On different trees, you will find some plants growing again. These are parasitic plants. They feed on the tree. They are not good for the tree. There are some places where you know parasites are good for the tree. But other places they are not. One more example is wheat. You know what wheat? That's not such. That's also a parasitic. It takes your legs, feeds on it. So yeah, uh, you're taking this down. Right? Parasitic roots are the roots of parasitic plants. Okay, they are they are specifically meant. They are specifically meant to penetrate plant tissue. They are specifically meant. To penetrate plant tissue. The next term is mycorrhizal. I'll write it down. Mycorrhizal. Yeah, take this down. It is it is the symbiotic S Y M B I O T I C. It is the symbiotic relationship. It is the symbiotic relationship between the plant. It is a symbiotic relationship between the plant and root fungus. Root fungus. It is a symbiotic relationship between a plant and a root fungus. Anyone know what's a symbiotic relationship? Basically, a relationship where both the parties are benefiting. Uh, for example, you know what's a rhinoceros, right? Pink is. Uh, 
So on these there are a lot of parasites. Small, small, breast sucking bugs and all. They're called ticks. So they are all. They get a lot, and these animals can't do anything. Some animals they go on a tree and they drop like. But chimpanzees can't stand or pull. They are just there. But sometimes you can see on some rhinos find some birds. And the rhinoceros doesn't do anything to the bird because this bird eats this thing. Okay. So the bird is benefiting by getting food. The rhinoceros is benefiting because it is having uh, a uh, parasite and getting eaten. In this symbiotic relationship, both the parties are benefiting. So now this root system, mycorrhiza, uh, it's very complex. Okay? So you have plant to this one, right? And then there's some fungus, and these fungus have long roots. Okay, and these roots will be connected to other plants. These fungus get nutrients from the plant, and the plants can use this roots which are connected to send messages to other plants. And don't think of plants as some dumb creatures. Okay, even they, they have shown signs of you know responding to uh, change, changes. They can respond to change in water. They can respond to, and they are known to communicate also. They communicate with this. Sometimes even if you know if there is some infestation of insects and all that, this, these plants will give information to these plants that insects are coming, and these plants will be prepared for that. Even if there is a disease and all that, it's very complex. Plant life is also complex. Don't think of it. As something simple. So yeah, this is the symbiotic relationship under this, where the plants use the fungus to send information, and the fungus gets nutrients from the plants. Clear? Got it? You got it? Okay. Yeah, I gave the definition. Then. Okay. The next one is rhizome. R H I Z O N E. Okay, they are horizontal. H O R I Z O N T A L. No horizontal. Horizontal. And then horizontal. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And vertical is like this. This is horizontal. Okay. So these they are horizontal underground plant. They are horizontal underground plant stem. They are horizontal underground plant stem, capable of capable of producing root systems, producing root systems. of a new of a new plant capable of producing root system of a new plant example ginger and turmeric examples ginger and turmeric these are little bit complex ginger and turmeric they are like they are not exactly the root form they are like this pair and they form these roots That's why it's like all varying. Yeah. And from that plant, this plant itself, from that we get roots. The plants are available. Those are rice. So yeah, I'll give you guys another five minutes break since all of you are tired. So I'll see you at five forty.
Hello, guys, come back. So we are concluding the class today. We are concluding the class. You know, you guys are tired. So yeah, you guys can log off. See you. Bye bye. Adios. Thank you, sir. Thank you.